Hello everyone, I'm Geek Freak, and welcome to the video. And to my fellow Yu-Gi-Oh fans, I want to ask you guys something. Is there a card that you love in real life? Like, in real life there was a, a Yu-Gi-Oh card that was printed into a real life card from the show. Regardless if it's a, a normal or it's a hard to come out card or its effects aren't good these days. Like, you've seen the card in the show, but it got printed in real life. And it could be a monster, a spell card or a trap card. And if most, if not all the time, that you would put in your deck because it was your favorite card. Or even if you don't put it in your main deck, you still love it because it's cool or like there was something there that attracted to you to that card. Because in the past, there was a few cards that I did like, like Sword Hunter, the Pumpkin King of Ghosts, you know, that sort of stuff. But sadly, Pumpkin King of Ghosts didn't have a good effect to it in real life. In the show, it had a much more better effect, like turning monsters into zombies and it gains attack points for every turn. Yeah, they really need to update the Pumpkin King of Ghost card. And the same with Sword Hunter. Its effect wasn't that good within the show or real life. But yeah, I'm going off track. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, even though I'm glad that there have been cards that was printed into existence from the show, and sometimes the card effects, and I mean sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, the effects of the spell, trap card, or monster card that was printed in real life wouldn't be the same like we saw it in the show, like Card of Sanctity in real life. You would banish cards that was in your hand and on the field, and you can draw two cards. But in the anime, Card of Sanity's effect is both players draw until they have six cards in their hand. I mean, I can understand why they didn't do this, because it's like a way overpowered card. But if they wanted to limit this card, they could have said, Card of Sanity can only be used once in a duel. And also, look on the bright side. Both players benefit from this card, so yeah. But hey, this is another discussion for another video. I'm going to get back to my main point, and that is cards that we saw in the show but never got a print. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. There are a few cards in the show that I wish got a print and an official release, and that's what I'm going to show you guys today. I am going to give you guys my top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I wish was made into real cards. Now, I'm going to let you guys know something. I'm only sticking with the original series. I'm not going to go into GX or 5D. It's just going to be in the original series. And also, some of these cards that I'm going to be mentioning on this list might be a little bit too simple and not too advanced like we have the cards of today. But even so, these are cards that I think are cool and I just like the look of them. Now, I'm either going to be doing them by individual cards or they are going to be in a group. Like, certain cards belong with a certain group. But you guys will understand what I'm talking about when you see what I've got on this list. And just to let you guys know, I know there are some cards that have been printed over the years that I do know about. And there was a few cards that I was going to put on this list. But after doing a little bit more research, the cards that I was going to put on this list has already been officially been released on print. And I could be wrong if a card has been printed or not. And if a card has been printed after the release of this video, then you guys will understand. So yeah, well, I'll send on. Let's resume with the video. And number 10 is the Duke of Demois. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something now. The Duke of Demois is a completely pointless card. This card was supposed to be a fusion card, and it was a fusion between the Earl of Demois and the Edless Knight. Hell, we see it in the show that it is a fusion between these two, and it creates the Duke of Demois. But instead of being a fusion monster, it's an effect monster. And its effect is, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. During each of your standby phases, pay 500 life points or destroy this card. So, not only is the card colour wrong, not only is its attack points 2000, on which you can have quite a few 4 leveled monsters that have that sort of attack, but you have to pay 500 life points to keep this on the field or it gets destroyed. And you know what? It doesn't sound very promising when I say it like that. Now, I know what some of you are going to say. You're going to say, Oh, but Geek Freak, if the Duke of Demise has all these problems, then why did you put it on this list? Well, there's a few reasons. Number one, even though I think the effect is outdated and it wouldn't last in this day and age, but I think they should update it to this card cannot be destroyed by magic, trap, or monster card effect. That would be a lot better. And back in the day, a monster that can't be destroyed by battle was a huge thing back in the day. And number two, well, basically, I just like the look of him. Yeah, I just think he looks cool. 
And after all these years, I still remember the Duke of Demois. To me, it was just a memorable card. He might not be the most memorable card to the majority of fans, and there could have been other cards that could have been in the Duke of Demois' place, but to me, he was just memorable. And even if they were to print this card, I think he should be given an update, like he can't be destroyed by magic, trap, or monster effect. And then you have to pay 500 life points. Now, some people will say that, oh, the Duke of Demise is too simple and it's not that much of a good card. But again, number one, I like the look of him. And number two, he's memorable. And those are the two reasons why I would like to have the Duke of Demise made into a card and maybe given an update and give it the right color scheme because remember, it's a fusion. So yeah, well, I'll send on. Let's move on to number nine. And number nine is Spiderweb. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of cheating here because I did say the only cards I'm going to be concentrating on are from the original series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, Spiderweb was in the original series and it was used by Atem in his duel against Raphael. And basically, this card effect is select one card in your opponent's graveyard that was sent to the graveyard on the previous turn and add that card to your hand. Now, the reason why I said I was cheating a little bit is because... This card actually stood out to me in GX when it was Jaden Yugi versus Dimitri. And I'm not going to lie, I absolutely love that duel. Dimitri wasn't no Yugi, but it was great to see Yugi's deck again. And even though I find it goofy, I loved how Dimitri was copying Atem in personality and in his voice. And the music, I mean, that was a freaking awesome duel. So yeah, it was actually Spiderweb's appearance in GX that inspired me to put Spiderweb into this list. And you know what? I don't understand why. They haven't printed Spiderweb because really it isn't a overpowered card. I mean, yeah, you can take any card in your opponent's graveyard, either magic, spell or trap. But it's not like Spiderweb is saying, OK, take any card out of your opponent's graveyard and add it to your hand. It's only asking that you take one card from your opponent's graveyard on your opponent's previous turn. And also, it's not like it's a useless card that needs to be updated. If anything, it's a useful card and you have to use it carefully. And it would be better if you add this card more earlier in the duel. So yeah, I definitely think that it's worth printing and making it official. And so, let's move on to number 8. And number 8 is Mirage Ruler. Okay, basically this card is basically Call of the Haunted, except you can return multiple monsters that was destroyed by battle when your opponent attacks and destroys your monsters. So let's just say for example that you've got five monsters on the field, and your opponent destroys all of them with battle, you can send Mirage Ruler to the graveyard, and you can return all the monsters that was destroyed by battle this turn, and gain life points equal to the damage you took, and you must pay 1,000 life points. And obviously, I saw this card in the duel with Atem and Yugi at their ceremonial duel. And you know what? I can kind of see why this card wasn't printed, because it's basically bringing back loads of monsters at once with a meager price to pay. This card is basically Monster Reborn and Call of the Haunted combined. Although, to be fair, if your opponent's monsters are the ones that's destroying your cards by battle and you've got nothing else in your hand at the moment, then at the very least, you'll have another chance. You'll have monsters on the field and you'll regain your life points. Well, obviously, you'll have to pay 1,000 life points. Although, to be fair, this card says that it has to be activated when your opponent declares an attack. So basically, let's just say for example that your opponent decides to attack your monsters and then you activate this card and let's just say for example that you've got three monsters on the field and your opponent attacks one of your monsters and destroys it, your opponent could decide to not to attack with the rest of the monsters that he has and just go, okay, what's the point if they're just gonna come back and your life points gets restored. But on the other hand, you would lose 1000 life points. I'm pretty sure there's something else on here that I'm missing but basically, this card is like a negate attack, except your monsters go to the graveyard and then they come back. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a combination for this card. Maybe it could be updated, like after all your monsters on the field are destroyed or as a result of battle. And then you activate this card. And then you can use its effect and restore your life points and restore all your monsters. And just to let you guys know, I'm reading this card's effect from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikipedia. So yeah, it kind of needs a little bit of an update. It's basically a negate attack. I mean, the effect is kind of confusing, but when it was used in Yu-Gi vs. Atem, I just love the fact that this card gave us a fake out. Oh no, all of Yu-Gi's cards are all destroyed. What are we going to do? Ha, psych, I use Mirage Ruler. Although this card could be used to 
mentally mess with your opponent. Like saying, aha, you've got no more monsters. And I've took a huge portion of your life points. Ha ha ha. And then you go, psych, I activate Mirage Ruler. It brings everything back and I got all my life points back. I just love the idea of that. And so with that said, let's move on to number seven. And number seven is Plasma Eel. And this card was shown in the duel with Marek versus Joey. And basically, this card cannot be destroyed as a result of battle. During either player's turn, you can equip this card to one of your face-up monsters on your opponent's side of the field. The equipped monster cannot be tributed, and it loses 500 attack points during each of your opponent's standby phases. Now, I'm not going to lie, I really do love Plasma Eel. You can use it as a wall for defense. You can equip it to a face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field. And the monster that's equipped to Plasma Eel cannot be tributed and it loses 500 attack points during each of your opponent's standby phases. So it is a decent card, but I think it might need a little bit of an update. In fact, I've got an idea on how they could improve this card. Now listen, I absolutely hate support cards when the cards are supporting one specific type of monster, like the Dark Magician, the Blue Eyes, the Red Eyes, but I am okay with it if the cards isn't like 10, 15, 20 cards, but a few is fine. But anyways, here's my idea. Plasma Eel should keep all of its abilities. It can't be destroyed by battle. The equipped monster equipped with Plasma Eel loses 500 attack points, and the monster that's equipped with Plasma Eel cannot be tributed. But here's what I would add. Plasma Eel cannot be tributed or used in a synchro, or cannot be stacked in a XYZ summon. The monster that Plasma Eel is attached to cannot lead the field. And also, I think they should make a spell card, and it's a continue, and it would be called something like Plasma Line or something like that. And its effect would be, depending on how many Plasma Eels that are attached to your opponent's monsters, when your opponent's monster loses 500 attack points each turn, your opponent would lose 500 life points for each Plasma Eel that's attached to your opponent's monster. And also, they should make another continue spell card, and it would be called Plasma Eel Jump Back. If any of your opponent's monsters attack, you directly. Plasma Eel comes back to your side of the field until the end of your opponent's turn, and if the monster that Plasma Eel was attached to is gone from the field, then it stays on your side of the field. But if it's still on the field, re-equip Plasma Eel to your opponent's monster. But hey, these are just my ideas. But I do like the original Plasma Eel, and maybe they could update like this. It stops your opponent from removing their monsters from the field, like Tributing, XYZ, Synchro, that sort of stuff. And the attacks that the monster loses, they also lose life points too. And the reason why I said this is because when Joey was facing off against Marek, Marek did something similar to Joey, but Joey wasn't losing life points. He was actually being affected to what was happening to his monsters. And his monsters were again shocked. So there is a good idea to this. But again, I do love the original Plasma Eel. I just love the way how Marek used Plasma Eel. And that was the reason why I added those sort of effects. And so let's move on to number six. And number six is the fairy tale cards. Now, I'm just gonna let you guys know something. This is only gonna be a short segment because even though Leon's cards have been printed and has been made official, there are still a few cards that hasn't been printed. There was the Forest Wolf, Little Red Riding Hood, and a fair few others. And to those who don't know, these cards belong to a character called Leon. And he has used these cards against Rebecca and Yugi in the Grand Championships. And Leon had that card called Golden Castle of Stormburg. And again, all these fairy tale cards aren't support cards, but they're actually themed cards. And they're all based on the fairy tale stories of old. Again, Little Red Riding Hood, Tom Thumb, etc. etc. Now, there has been some cards that has been distributed and printed but there's still some cards that still goes along with this deck. And the reason why I put it on this list is because I'm just happy some cards that's based on Western stories. And you know what? I think it's only fair that every single card that was associated with the Felketary cards that should be released. Now these fairy tale cards are one of many bunches of cards that I'm going to be mentioning forward on. But to me, I think it's a shame the full set of the cards that Leon had wasn't released, to my knowledge anyways. Now, let's move on to number five. This one's going to be another short one, and it is the Landstar cards that was used by Joey in the Grand Championships. Now, there has been two official releases. There was the original Swordsman of Landstar, 
and there was Comrade Swordsman of Lansar. And to be fair, I can only remember Knight of Landstar, Grappler of Landstar, Brigadier of Landstar, and there was the spell card, Landstar Force. The Knight has 1000 attack points, the Grappler has 1000 attack points, the Brigadier has 900 attack points, and Swordsman of Landstar has 400 attack points. The same as the Comrade. And the spell card, Landstar Force. Effect is, you can special summon as many level 3 or lower Landstar monsters from your hand as possible in face up attack position. And yes, I understand that there really isn't anything more to these guys. They're just a bunch of weak monsters, and you can special summon as many as you want from your hand. But these guys kind of remind me of the Ojama monsters. I mean, you could use these guys in a low level deck if you wanted to, or you can use them for defense, or you can use them in synchros, or in XYZ summons. There are some ideas to this, so I don't see why they can't print these things into official. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. Let's move on to number four. And number four is every single Ori Kalkos card that was ever shown in the show, including the great Leviathan. Now listen, I think the Seal of Ori Kalkos has been made into a card, and there was also that giant snake thing, and there was also that big massive doll thing that was used by darts, but there are other Ori Kalkos cards that need to be officially released. There were those two other field spell cards of the Ori Kalkos, and there was a ritual monster that was a mirror, Ori Kalkos Gigas, Orichalcos Malevolence. Basically what I'm saying is, every single Orichalcos card should be released. Because there are quite a few cards that Dodge used against Yugi and Kaiba. And it wasn't just the Orichalcos cards. Again, there was that Mirror Monster, there was Gigas, a few Trap and Spell cards. All of Dodge's cards should be released. And not only that, but I think the Leviathan should also be made into a card. I mean, think about it for a second. The Egyptian God cards was based off of real monsters. Well, not real monsters, but it was real monsters within the show. And they were made into monster cards. So, why not make the Leviathan into a monster card? Because we need to remember something. The Great Leviathan is actually older than the God cards. And it took three God cards to take down this thing. So, if you ask me, I think the Leviathan should also be made into a card. Again, we've already had a few Orichalcos cards. But, I want to see all of them being made into official cards. They would be loads of fun to play. And not only that, I also think they should be given the same rules like they would in the show. You know, given extra spaces, they get 500 attack points, you know, stuff like that. That would be loads of fun. So yeah, please release every single Orichalcos card and every card that darts use in general. And also give the Leviathan a card version of itself, just like the Egyptian God cards. I mean, seriously, the Leviathan needs to be a card. And I wouldn't mind playing Orichalcos Gaius. He just keeps coming back no matter what you do. I really do love the Orichalcos cards, especially that mirror thing. These are all great cards. And also the left and right arms of that doll thing. I would say its name, but I would just screw it up. You know what? I'll give it a go. Orichalcos Shunuros or something. Don't blame me. It's been a long time since I've heard its name. But yeah, again, all the Orichalcos cards, all the cards that Dodge use in general, and the Leviathan should get its own card version of itself. And so, with that said, let's move on to number three. And number three is Gansley's Swamp Cards. Now, when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I like my monsters and spell cards and traps to be simple. And Gansley's cards are simple. Now, if you've seen the show and you saw Gansley versus Yugi, some of Gansley's cards have been made into existence. Um, Imperia, Yaoi, obviously the Deep Sea Warrior's been made, you know, stuff like that. Anyways, there are three other cards that hasn't been made into print yet, and those cards are Rukilumba, the Spirit King. I know a bunch of that. Basically, the effect is, when you take a thousand battle damage, you can special this card from your hand during either player's turn. You can tribute this card to special summon monsters from your hand, whose combined attack is 2000 or less in face up attack mode. So basically, let's just say for example that you had three Ojama monsters in your hand and you tributed the Spirit King, you can summon all three of your Ojamas from your hand. I mean, that's a pretty good effect. And you've got a Shinigrai and its flipped effect is your opponent discards one card. When this card is destroyed as a result of battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Shinigrai from your hand or deck in face down defense position. So yeah, this card does have a decent effect. 
It's defending your life points while your opponent is sending cards from his hand to the graveyard. So yeah, this is a decent card. I just don't understand why it wasn't printed. And we come to Rainbow Snake in Ghana. When this card is sent to the graveyard, destroy all your opponent's monsters. And again, this has a really good effect to it. I mean, yeah, you need two cards to summon this monster, but it destroys all of your opponent's monsters. I mean, come on, Rainbow Snake is like saying, haha, if you try to destroy me, I'll destroy all your monsters. And you know what? Gansley's cards have always been my favorite cards within the Virtual World Saga. They were just so unique, and I just like the look of them. I mean, yeah, some of his cards have been made official, but the other three cards needs to be released. They've got simple, but really good effects. They were unique, and again, I just like the look of them, especially Rainbow Snake and Ashinagray. And the Spirit King has a decent effect too. I don't really think they need an update. I just think they're good just the way they are. And so, with that said, let's move on to number two. And number two is the legendary dragons, the Eye of Tomaius, the Fang of Critias, and the Claw of Emos. That's right, I am putting these three cards in this list. Now, I know what some people are going to say. They're going to say, oh, but Geek Freak, most if not all the cards that we saw in the show with these cards have already been made. Maybe one or two of them haven't been released. Are you talking about those cards that haven't been released with these cards? Wait, 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 let me explain. Listen, I know for a fact the majority of the cards that's related to these dragons are and have been released officially, more or less. But I think one or two might not have been released, you know, officially, and it's only anime only. I don't know which ones that are still anime only, but that's not what I'm talking about. The thing is, like Time Wizard, it was a missed opportunity to not use Time Wizard for more cards to evolve, like Baby Dragon into Thousand Dragon, Dark Magician into Dark Sage. They could have used Time Wizard for other cards as well. Like, maybe turning the Summon Skull into the Great Summon Skull or something. You know, something like that. The Eye of Tomias, Fang of Critias, and the Claw of Ermos. Oh yeah, also, sorry for butchering the names. These three cards could have been used on other cards. Like, the Eye of Tomias has been used on the Dark Magician Girl and Dark Magician himself. The Fang of Critias has been used on Mirror Force and the Virus card. The Claw of Ermos has been used on the Red Eyes and a few other cards, like the, the Time Wizard. And a fair few others have gone about. And you want to know something? Like Time Wizard, these cards were a missed opportunity. And yes, listen, I know they're not canon, and they're anime only, and they don't play a major importance to the story. But, my god, these cards were freaking awesome. You can turn any card into any equip spell, or a monster, and it would give those monsters special abilities, or turn them into equip spells, or turn them into kinda sorta trap monsters or something. And for the ones we've got, they're all good. But I would have loved to have seen more cards being used by these cards. I mean, what would happen if these cards actually fused with the God cards? Or what if the Fang of Critias actually fused with the Blue Eyes? Or what if the Claw of Eremos was used on Gear Freed the Lightning? Or what if the Fang of Critias was used on the Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl? I honestly wish that we got to see more cards used with these cards. Now, I know what some people are going to say. They're going to say, Oh, but Geek Freak, there are way too many traps and monsters and spell cards out there. How are we going to choose which ones to fuse with these three legendary dragons? Well, when it comes to the legendary dragons, I don't think Critias, Tamias, and Hermos should just fuse with any card. But what if, now hear me out, what if these three dragons can only be fused with monsters, traps, and spell cards that Kaiba, Joey, and Yugi has used throughout the entire series? Because, if I remember correctly, when the dragons turned to knights, I think they actually looked like Kaiba, Joey, and Yugi. And Joey, Kaiba, and Yugi were the chosen ones to wield these legendary dragons. So I think the best idea is, all the cards that Joey, Kaiba, and Yugi has ever had in their decks, spell, trap, and of course, monster, from Duelist Kingdom, Battle City, the semi-finals, the virtual world, the semi-finals, and from the movie, The Pyramid of Light, and of course, the Urukako Saga, where these dragons are united. And there's also the Grand Championships, and so on and so on. And there was also the Beyond Dimensions movie. So, you know, from the beginning of the series all the way to the end of the original series, including the movies. And also, not just that, Yugi's deck was actually shown within GX. And there was a few cards in there too, that we never actually saw within the OG series. 
And then there was Jaden's duel with Yugi near the end. And no, I'm not counting Kyber Man or the Red Eyes deck because those characters aren't Kyber or Joey unless they were actually in the other series or their decks was in another series. And it was said, oh, this is Kyber's deck or oh, this is Joey's deck or oh, this is Yugi's deck. Like in those two episodes, King of the Copycats. So you guys have basically got the general idea of what I'm trying to say. Every card that Joey, Kyber and Yugi has ever had should be able to fuse with these legendary dragons. And also, these cards won't be just strictly to their owner's deck, like Tomas for Yugi, or Critias for Kaiba, or Hermos for Joey. These three dragons can actually affect each other's decks as well. Do you guys remember Miraforce Dragon? It was a fusion between the Fang of Critias and Miraforce. And the thing is, Miraforce is actually Yugi's card, not Kaiba's. I mean, we've seen a fusion between Dark Magician Girl and Tomias, and we've seen Dark Magician with Tomias. But just imagine what the Fang of Critias and the Claw of Urmos could do to Dark Magician Girl and Dark Magician. Or imagine what the Eye of Tomas could do to Joey's cards like the Time Wizard or Red Eyes Black Dragon. Or Hermos with Kyber's Blue Eyes White Dragon. And it wouldn't just be monsters, there's the spell cards and the trap cards that each character has. Like what if Urmos fused with Negate Attack that Kyber has? Or what if the Fang of Critias actually fused with Jinzo? Or what if the Fang of Critias actually fused with Curse of Dragon. It's like, okay, let's just say for example you got yourself a Dark Magician, and we've seen what the Eye Tomas does to the Dark Magician, but what if the Fang of Critias fused with the Dark Magician or Hermos? That would be three different forms of the Dark Magician using different dragons, and they might actually have different effects, or they might have the same effect or have different purposes. Like, what if Hermos actually turned the Dark Magician into a spell card, or what if the Fang of Critias actually turns a Red Eyes into a trap monster? or if the Fang of Critias actually fused with Monster Reborn, there would be three versions of each of the cards that these dragons would fuse to, and that would be a lot of cards, considering I said all the cards that Yugi, Joey, and Kaba has had from the beginning all the way to the end. I mean, what if the Eye of Tomas actually fused with one of Joey's Landstar cards, or what if the Claw of Urmos fused with Kaba's Negate Attack, or what about this, what about Exodia, and the Eye of Tomas, or Fang of Critias, or Claw of Eremos. There is a lot, and I mean a lot of potential for these cards, but just so that they can't fuse with every single card in the game, I think they can only fuse with the cards that Joey, Kaiba, and Yugi has used throughout the entire series. You know, handpicked by them, because they were the chosen ones, and these dragons can affect each other's owner's decks, so it would keep the cards to a minimum, but they would have loads of potential. And that's what I'm talking about. These cards add loads of potential. And again, I'm not saying that, oh, I want every single card to fuse with these dragons, but only the cards that Yugi, Joey, and Kaiba has ever used in the series. And again, there's like three versions of every card that they've ever used, if they was to use the dragons. Again, for example, what if the Claw of Hermos, the Fang of Critias, and the Eye of Tomas actually fused with the Dark Magician? That's like three versions of the Dark Magician and not just that, what about fuse monsters that Kaiba, Joey, and Yugi has had? They could fuse with them too. Again, they could do so much more with these cards. So yeah, that's an idea. Again, these things are like the Time Wizard with Baby Dragon and Dark Sage, or Thousand Dragon, or the Dark Magician. There could have been other monsters that could have been brought out thanks to the Time Wizard. So yeah, I've gone on long enough for this segment. So let's move on to number one. Valen's Armor Monsters. Good God, these things are so freaking cool. This is even cooler than when Yami Marek actually fused with the Egyptian god Ra. I mean, come on, these things are a freaking suit. Now, here's the thing. We've only ever seen two duels when it came to Valen and his monsters. It was a two-on-one battle with Valen versus Duke and Rebecca. And that duel was a taste of what we were going to see when it came to Valen and Joey. And when it came to Valen and Joey, oh, MG it was awesome because here's the thing this wasn't a it wasn't just a regular duel It wasn't just to save the world from the seal of Orichalcos or the Leviathan scenario But it was a duel for the girl that they both care about and that was Moi So basically Valen had his armor and Joey also had his own version of the armor And they were actually hitting each other and both of them were just fighting each other Well once per turn, but you know what I'm trying to say. I mean come on that duel was awesome now, when it came to Valen's cards, to be fair, it's kind of confusing. I mean, each card has its own 
ability, like for example, one card directs another card to another card, inflict battle damage to your opponent equal to the monster that you've just destroyed, negate a trap card, special summon an armor card, you know, that sort of thing. You know, inflict battle damage there, redirect attack over there, you know, that sort of thing. Now, I've been hearing a few people say that the armor cards ain't that good, and they just use them for synchros or link fodder. And I have looked on YouTube watching videos on how the armor monsters work. And to be honest, I don't really see it, but at the same time, I kind of get what they're saying. I don't think the armor cards would actually work with the way the game has been played these days. I mean, I could be wrong, but saying that, even if the armor cards don't work in this day and age, I still love the look of them. I mean, if they wanted to, they could actually update these cards. Like, every single piece of the armor could do absolutely everything. Like, one piece of the armor redirects a card, one card negates a spell card, one card negates a trap card. To be honest, I don't know how they would be able to update this card. But saying that, I really do love the look of the armor cards. I mean, I really do. And, like I said, if it is out of date and it wouldn't work this day and age, again, they could update them. In fact, I think the armor cards might actually be one of the few support cards that I actually do like because it makes sense. Because it's an armor monster and every single piece of the armor is helping the other armor monsters. For me, I think the armor monsters are cool. They gave us one of the best duels in Yu-Gi-Oh. I really, really do love the armor cards. And listen, I don't know why they didn't make them official. Because I don't know. I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they were just too powerful. Maybe they just wouldn't hack it in this day and age. Or maybe something about censorship. I don't know. But again, I do love these cards. I think they're awesome. And it's one of the most unique monsters. In fact, if they was to get an update, they could be one of the most unstoppable monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. Again, an armor card could negate a spell. Another could negate a trap. Another could negate an effect monster. Another could destroy a monster and it gives your opponent damage. Or it redirects an attack. But hey, it's been a long time since I've seen these cards. I really do love these cards. and I think they should either get an update or a release. Or, even better, do both. Because I would definitely, 100%, play them. So, what do you guys think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you guys like this list? Are there cards that you want to see be made official so you can play with them? Please let me know in the comments down below and let's get a discussion going. I'm Geek Freak. Peace out. Thank you guys for watching. And if there's a series you want me to check out and review and give my thoughts on it, or if there's a top 10 list you want me to do, or any reactions, or responses, or rants on anything geeky, just leave links and comments in the comment sections below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Don't forget to like, subscribe, put the bell on, share this video, and leave a comment in the comment sections below. And as for my social medias, I'm literally freaking everywhere! I'm on most video platforms, social medias, forums, and support sites. It's best to pause the video and see where I am. Literally all of this is down in the description box below. So if you want to go and check those out, please do. I'm Geek Freak. Peace out.